Well, heart-wrenching photos tonight are pouring in from Ukraine, showing the extent of Vladimir Putin's cruelty. Rescuers are now discovering landmines on the so-called humanitarian corridor. At least 406 civilians are reported dead, 27 of those being children. Children like this 18-month-old boy who died after his home was bombed in the city of Maripol over the weekend. He was rushed to the hospital, but sadly, he didn't survive. Well, with the death toll continuing to climb and dozens of hospitals destroyed, Samaritan's Purse is sending much-needed help to Ukraine. They're setting up an emergency field hospital in the outskirts of Lviv in Ukraine. Joining us now on those efforts and how you can help is the president and CEO of Samaritan's Purse and the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, Franklin Graham. Franklin, it's so good to see you. Sorry it's under these circumstances. Uh, but you know, Samaritan's Purse sets up field hospitals all over the world. Uh, talk to us about the capabilities of this field hospital, and is it any different from how you all have operated in past scenarios? Uh, well, this one, of course, uh, Lindsay has set apart trauma. It's a tier two hospital. It'll have two operating theaters, emergency room, uh, x-ray, uh, laboratory, 58 beds. Uh, we're set up in Lviv uh, is where we're, we've got it set up. We should see our first patients. Uh, probably sometime on Wednesday is when we'll see the first patients. You know, Franklin, what I think is unique are, is, is you've got Putin not abiding by the Geneva Conventions. He's attacking civilians, schools, hospitals, uh, residential areas. So, one, have you guys ever been in a situation like this where there's active fire coming your way? Uh, and two, what are the, the extraordinary circumstances that you and your staff are having to take because of this? Well, first of all, the, the city of Lviv right now is not a target, and it's been quiet there. But that doesn't mean it'll be quiet for long. I don't know. Uh, but that for us, you know, we just feel this is something God has told us to do, want us to do. Uh, I want the people of Ukraine to know that God hasn't forgotten them, that he loves them, he cares for them very much. And so when we go, Sean, we're going in Jesus' name. And we're going to bring the best medical care that we possibly can we're going to love these people the, the best that we can. And, and we pray as we go that somehow uh, there can be an end to this very violent conflict. But right now we're going to go patch up people and take care of as many people as we possibly can. And, and I understand that obviously we've covered this a lot, how the great work that you guys do. But have you ever been in a circumstance for, I mean, I know you guys help so much with COVID. You've been there for natural disasters. Have you ever been in a situation, though, where potentially your folks and, and the folks that you're serving at a hospital could be under attack. Ever has that occurred in the past? Yes, that has. In northern Iraq, when we were outside of Mosul, uh, when the Iraqi army was trying to take uh, Mosul back from ISIS, uh, we were just 11 miles from, uh, from uh, uh, Mosul at that time. And so we were always afraid there were those car bombs. Hmm. Uh, Franklin, I know your son, Edward, who we've had on this show, is actually in Ukraine helping set up this tent. What have reports been like from your team, what they're seeing on the ground, and, and how the Ukrainian people are responding to, to your presence? First of all, it's total chaos uh, on the ground. But yet we've had uh, nothing but a warm welcome from everybody, uh, from government officials, church officials. Uh, Samaritan's Purse has a network of over 3,200 churches in the Ukraine. Uh, we've been working there for since 1996 with Operation Christmas Child. Uh, this year we took in 660 some thousand shoebox gifts and had 400,000 of those delivered prior to the invasion. Uh, and we'll get the others out as soon as uh, the fighting stops. But uh, we've been working there a long time, but right now it's just absolute chaos. Uh, we are setting up a, a clinic uh, tomorrow down at the train station. There's about 65 to 70,000 people a day come through that train station. Uh, women are having babies on the train. Uh, you have uh, people that are wounded. Uh, there are emergency, uh, all kinds of just healthcare emergencies, and there's nobody there at the train station to take care of them. So we're going to put a triage center in, and for those that really need help, uh, we're going to take them to the hospital. And so, but we start that uh, tomorrow at the train station. And so I know you've got almost what, 2 million refugees have fled Ukraine. Um, with, I get you're setting up there right at the train station, but what's the other way that you guys get the word out as to where people should go? Because like I said, and the idea that Putin is going after hospitals and schools is frankly unheard of in, in, in terms of modern day warfare. Uh, the idea that he is 
doing the, I, I, anyway, so how do you guys get the word to people? Here's where you can go to get help. Here's where these field hospitals are. Well, the, the Ukrainian government really is responsible for that, Sean. Uh, I mean, we don't have an advertising campaign there, but the Ukrainian government, they know where, uh, where we are. And of course, we're working very closely with them as far as their ministry of health. Uh, of course, they, it is danger, but there's danger everywhere we go in this world, Sean. Uh, you can have danger in this country just walking down the street. But I don't think we should run from just because it may be dangerous. Uh, we go in the name of Jesus Christ, and I'm, I'm confident that we'll be safe. And, if, you know, well, Sean, if something happened and, um, you know, somebody got hurt, all of our staff there understand the risk. And uh, all of them are willing to accept those risks. Wow. Franklin, before we let you go, how can our viewers help you in your efforts? Uh, well, they can go to our uh, website, SamaritansBirth.org, Lindsay, and all the information uh, is there that we're doing. Of course, we need financial help. And uh, we're going to need, uh, in the long, in the long term, we're going to need uh, medical staff as well, so, uh, Christian doctors and nurses that would like to volunteer. Wow. Franklin Graham, really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you for filling us in. Uh, our prayers are with you and your team. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Sean.